Welcome to Mission Independent Baptist Church, our Sunday afternoon service. What a beautiful day in Chicago, uh, Sunday, February 11th. And may God bless the people that came out here today. And uh, you know what? It's been a it's been a blessed week. Uh, uh, we're praying for uh, Miss Lurleen down in uh, not there in Texas or in Florida at the competition with her granddaughter Allison and uh, her mom uh, Sandy and uh, her. Uh, uh, Son-in-law Matt and uh, Gavin, uh, he had some competition, and uh, they had, uh, they're down in Florida. Well, we're praying for them that everything goes well and that God gets the glory. Remember, everything you do is to the glory of God. Lift up the name of Jesus when no matter you, no matter what you do, lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. And Amen. Uh, we had, uh, we're also praying for uh, Miss Kim, unspoken prayer uh, for her, and uh Keep her in the prayer, in your prayers, and uh, just stuff uh, for people. You know, a lot of people sick, uh, but they're feeling. So a lot of people feeling better. God heals. Thank the Lord. And we're gonna sing. Now I belong to Jesus. Uh, number verse, uh, page number ninety-nine. Jesus, my Lord, will love me forever. From Him no power of evil can sever. He gave his life to ransom my soul. Now I belong to him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Once I was lost in sin's degradation, Jesus came down to bring me salvation, lifted me up from sorrow and shame. Now I belong to Him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Joy floods my soul, for Jesus has saved me, freed me from sin that long had enslaved me. His precious blood he gave to redeem. Now I belong to him. Now I belong to Jesus, Jesus belongs to me, not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Amen. We're going to eternity with Jesus. One day he's coming back. Well, next Saturday, I think Pastor Stiller's coming in. And we're handing out these tracks at Argyle Street at one o'clock at Argyle and Broadway. We got some, we got Chinese tracks. We got a uh, simplified, or that's actually an English track, English track. And then we got a simplified Chinese track. And then we got a, I guess a hard Chinese track. And then we got a Vietnamese track. So we got all kinds of tracks. We're gonna put them all together. I boxed up a whole bunch, but we got more to put together and stamp and. Uh, you know what? The the harvest is plenteous and the laborers are few. We pray that God will send some more laborers in the harvest. I do believe Pastor Stiller and a few people are coming from Wisconsin from his church there. And uh, who knows, maybe Brother Bob and some people and a few people from here. And we're going to get out there and tell them people about Jesus Christ. Amen. We have to get out there. You know, if we don't do it, who's going to do it? There's not a lot of churches. There ain't a lot of people out there telling people. You know, times are dark, you know. Today, it's the Super Bowl. Everybody's, they're not thinking about Jesus. They're thinking about drinking, eating, having fun. And you know what? You should have your mind on Jesus Christ all the time. But, you know, God says one day a week, Sunday is his day. And you should uh, not forsake the assembly. You should come gather together and praise him and give him honor and glory. Sing songs to God. And you know what? God will bless you. You know, not everybody, uh, you know, not everybody's there. There's people in churches and uh, people serving God. We know a lot of people in Texas, Rogers Baptist and Mazan Baptist and uh, Bridgeview and uh, a lot of people, a lot of people. So uh, 
Let's pray. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I pray for your word to be spoken, your Holy Spirit to speak your words, not mine, Lord. And I pray that you teach us and edify us what you want us to hear, Lord. I pray that you would get all the glory in Jesus, Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right, I'm going to teach in Romans chapter 13, verses 1 to 14. And I titled this, The Real Power. You know, Jesus is the real power. You know, when people talk, you know, I got power or, you know, they got fame or they got money. That's no power. That, that kind of power disappears. Jesus got all power in heaven and earth. God the Father gave to him. Amen. Let's look at Romans 13, verses 1 through 14. And it says, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained are of, of God. Whosoever therefore resists the power, resistance the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger, to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, you must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for the conscience' sake. For this cause pay ye tributes also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Render, therefore, to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fair to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in his saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law, and that, knowing the time that now is, high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fill fulfill the lust thereof. You know, that last verse, I'm going to start, but put ye on Lord Jesus Christ and not make provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. You know, uh, we have to walk in the spirit of Jesus Christ. We have to be in his spirit and not walk in the flesh. And let's look at, start from verse one. Uh, it says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that are ordained, are, or that be are ordained of God. So every soul is under authority. It's submissive, you know, to the higher powers. God's, uh, God's uh, set up uh, three things of authority. He set up the family. He set up the government. And he set up the church. You know, every soul is under authority uh, to these higher authorities. You know, government, uh, God God gave us government. But you know what? The government, we, we obey their laws. But, you know, there's laws and God, God's laws are more above any other law because his laws are the highest laws and God is God, amen? We have to be, be under authority to his word. You know, just because there's laws in the, in the country or in the city doesn't make them right. We have to look in God's word. I'm not telling you to break laws or anything, but if God says something, God's, God's law overrides any other law because God wrote it, amen? Amen. Uh, you know, we need to, the church is before the government. The church, you know, you come here. It's a local New Testament church. God established a church for people to come. You trust him. You trust him as Lord and Savior. He has to be baptized into the church. You get baptized into a no, local New Testament Baptist church. You're part of the church. You're part of the family of God. And God is the head of the church. So we have to not forsake the assembling, it says, as others have. So we have to be under the authority. God ordains the powers that be 
for his will. You know, you know, God raises up kings, God takes kings down. You know, so God puts up rulers. If the country's wicked and they're allowing, if we're not speaking up against abortion and uh, you know all kinds of wickedness, then God's gonna God raises up kings and he takes down kings. Let's look at Daniel 2, 21 and 23. Daniel 2, 21 and 23. Ezekiel Daniel. <clears throat> Ezekiel 2, 21 and 23 says, to 23 it says, And he changes the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. So God raises up presidents, governors, uh, people in charge in the city, mayors. He raises them up and he takes them down. So it says, And he changes the times and the seasons. Well, you know, we got, we're in winter now, but it kind of feels like spring, but, you know, you got spring. Uh, summer, fall, and then winter. So he changes the seasons, and he removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise. So you want to be wise, you study God's word and obey what he says in this book. But the people who are kings who don't obey God's word, they go against God. And then, you know what, that's why wicked things happen, and they have bad, bad laws. And the knowledge to them that know, to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. So when you study God's word, you understand. You start understanding things you've never understood before. He knoweth what's in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. You know, in darkness, there's no good. You can't see in the dark. You walk in darkness, you're going to can't see. You're going to stumble and fall. You know, it's just like the leaders in the country who are putting in all wicked laws, like ungodly stuff against God. You can't, you can't win against God. You can't go against God. You can't fight against God, and you can't, you're not, never going to win against Him. You know, it's gonna, you're going to have troubles and uh, more troubles. You make bad choices, you have troubles. And then it says I, uh, in verse 23, I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who's, who has given me wisdom and might. So he gives you wisdom. If you study his word and you, you apply his word to your life, he gives you wisdom. He gives you might. He gives you the strength. And these kings, mayors, presidents, you know, people who obey God's word, God lifts them up. You know, and if you go against God, he's going to take you down. And it says, And has man known unto me now what we desired for thee? For thou hast no, no, now made known unto us the king's matter. You know, the, you know, the king's matters. God, you know, the God gives kings wisdom to, to rule their kingdoms well or their countries well. You know, the USA used to honor God. You know, Sunday, everybody, all the churches were closed. You know, people, I mean, not churches were closed. All the stores were closed. All the businesses were closed. All the gas stations were closed. I remember when I was a kid, probably in the early 70s, and uh, there wasn't much open on. Maybe a gas station was open on Sunday. But a lot of stuff was closed, and people honored God and uh, came to church, and uh, they at least rested. God said rest on the seventh day, but now people are doing too much stuff on Sunday. You know, uh, you know, we had to pledge allegiance in schools. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, one nation under God, with liberty and justice for all. They took that out of the school. You know, when you take God out of things, things aren't going to get better; they're going to get worse. And it says here, uh, you know, you know, people used to pray before many events. You know, you had a whatever, a, a boxing match, a high school football game. People would pray. And they would give praise to God that nobody would get hurt and give God the glory in the name of Jesus. But you can't do that anymore. You can, I do, but people are afraid to because, like, the powers that be that are wicked, oh, we're going to put you in jail, we're going to arrest you, we're going to, you know, They'll fire you, you know, but no, lift up the name of Jesus wherever you go. You know, God blessed America, but now I don't know. You know, we're no, our country's no better than any other country. If we, if we trust God and if we believe God's word and we lift up God, God will bless us. If we 
don't lift up God and go against him, he's not going to bless us. You know, there's honor and glory should be to God only in Jesus' name. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 6.20. 1 Corinthians 6.20. Now the powers that are ordained to God. 1 Corinthians 6.20. It says, For you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. So you know what? We're bought with the price. We're bought with the price of the blood of Jesus Christ. He died for us. So you know what? We owe him. We need to... We need, we need to Tell others about him and live holy as he is holy till he comes. Amen. We have to honor him. We have to give honor to God. We have to bring honor back to God in this country. We have to tell people. We have to train people. Last night I was at work. Some guy jumped over and I rebuked. I said, hey, you can't got to pay. And the guy said, I'll kill you. I said, what? You'll kill me. He said, I'll send you to your maker. I said, my maker is Jesus Christ. And I stood there. He's like, come here. I said, no, no, come here. He goes, I'll kill you, I'll kill you. You know, a guy wearing a mask and all kinds of stuff, but I think he thought about that. I thought, hey, you know what? I'll send you your maker. If you go to your maker, you're going to hell. I, I, my maker is Jesus Christ. I'm going to heaven. If this guy didn't know the Lord Jesus Christ, he's going to hell. Um, you know, people are wicked now. Wicked, wicked. They're doing wrong. You know, God, you know, God, God's got the final judgment and everything. God makes wicked. You know, he, 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 you know what? If people are wicked, they continue to live their life wicked and wicked. You know what? It says some man's sins come beforehand and some man's sins come after. And, uh, you know, people now, I, I'm not sure. It's, 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 it's a whole different time. And I, you know what? Like the Bible says, there's nothing new that's new under the sun. So this stuff's happened before, but in a different way at a different time. Let's look at Matthew 28, 18, and 19. Matthew 28, 18, and 19. You know, Jesus is the real power. Matthew 28, 18, and 19. And you lift up the name of Jesus, you know what? And you pray to him and ask him to help you in your time of need, casting all your care upon him, and he'll, he'll help you. Matthew 28, 18, and 19. And it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. All power, not some power. He is all power. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And then it says, Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So he's with us to the end of the world. You know what? Pray for that young man. You know what? We didn't pray for that young man last night. I don't know who he was. He threatened to kill me, but pray for him that God touches his heart, his mind, his soul, and chains him, and he turns to the Lord Jesus Christ and asks him to forgive him, you know, and he maybe come to church here one day. Amen. Amen. You know, maybe I'll see him again. I was going to give him a track, but I think if I'd have came, I don't know if he, he was reaching in his pack, so he might have had a gun or a knife or something. So, you know, we have to be careful too, you know. Uh, but, you know, pray for that young man that God save his soul. Amen. Uh, let's look now at verse number two. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power. You know, you resist God. You know, you go against God, you're not going to win. You can't resist the power. You know, God is all power. Resisting the ordinances of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. You don't want damnation. Damnation's everlasting separation from God. You know what? Somewhere in your life, if you're, you know, you're, you're going to hear about God. And you know what? God draws all men. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to me. So you know what? All men hear. They hear the gospel. They've heard somewhere. And you know what? When you have troubles, instead of running from God, most people run from God. Instead of when you have troubles, that's when you need to get closer to God and ask him to help you. You know, when you, when you, when you have troubles, that's when you come to God and ask him, Lord, help me. I have this problem. Please help me, Lord. And explain, talk to him, talk to God, you know, let him know what your troubles are and your problems. You know, we're this life, we're going to have trials and tribulations, but Jesus said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So you know what? He's overcome the world. We can overcome the world. Amen. Let's look at 1 Timothy 1.17. 1 Timothy 1.17. It 
It says, Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. You know what? Jesus Christ is king. He's eternal. He's immortal. He's invisible. The only wise God. He's the only. There is no other God wise like our God, like Jesus Christ. And you know what? He's he 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 yesterday too, when I went to work, there was a bunch of Jehovah Witnesses there. So I started talking to him. I said, Oh, can I have a magazine? And I just want to look at it and see what it says. I'm not afraid of it. You know, God's word's God's word the Holy Bible, and I want to see what it compares. And, you know, it, you know, it's got some truth, some truth, and all of a sudden it's Jesus isn't God, you know. They have him like a smaller God, so, you know, that's not true. So I went back to him. I go, what do you guys believe? I go, you guys believe Jesus is God? And they go, oh, no, Jehovah, Jehovah. I said, Jehovah. I said, so, uh, so Jesus isn't God. And then I told them, what is uh, Moses, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? How did they How did they know God? What was God's name to them? And the young guy goes, oh, Jehovah. I said, no. I said, in the Bible, it says that Moses asked God, he said, what do I tell the children of Israel? Who, you know, what's your name? And he says, I am that I am. And that's an everlasting covenant. It's a name forever, everlasting forever. Now, Jesus' name, God's name is Jehovah, and it's many other names. The rock, you know, he's the lily of the valley. You know, Jesus has many names. Uh, then I went to Isaiah, I think it's 9-6, Isaiah 9-6, and it says, let's go to Isaiah 9-6. Let's take a look at that. Because they told me Jesus isn't God. And then the guy told me, you believe what you believe, and we, you know we believe what we believe. I said, oh, okay. I said, I believe the Bible. I believe the Bible is the true word of God. And this, so I told him, let's go to Isaiah 9-6. It says, for unto us a child is born, that's Jesus Christ, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. So Jesus' name is Wonderful. And it says Counselor, so Jesus' name is Counselor. The Mighty God, Jesus' name is the Mighty God. The Everlasting Father, uh, and it said the Prince of Peace. So these are all names for Jesus Christ. And you know, and then uh, the older people, the uh, ladies were there, I think they were like, don't, don't talk to him anymore because I probably knew too much Bible. But uh, then I said, w what are you going to do? When you die and you're going to be judged, you're going to be standing in front of Jesus Christ, and you're going to tell him he's not God. And I said, he's going to tell you, ye who work iniquity, depart from me into everlasting fire, because you're going to tell him, you're going to tell God he's not God. And, uh, you know, I tried to reason with them, but they seemed blinded, but... You know, then I went back. So let me give you gospel. Oh, we can't take it. I said, "What are you afraid of it? I take your stuff. You can't take mine." So I mean, you know, uh, there was a lot of, uh, you know, what I told him. I just want to see people go to heaven. So I want to see them go to heaven, just like that young man who threatened me. I'd like to see him go to heaven. You know, trust the Lord Jesus Christ. But you hear, and again, it says, "Whosoever therefore resists the power." resistance the ordinance of God and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation so if you don't you know you hear it and hear it and you resist it and resist it and you don't turn to Jesus Christ ask them to forgive you or you believe a lie it says many people in the end days which we're in now they're going to believe a lie and they're not going to believe the truth and you know what they're going to they're going to receive to themselves damnation let's look at revelation 14:7 Revelation 14, 7. It says, Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come, and worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of the waters. So, you know what? The hour is coming when Jesus is going to come back and he's going to judge the world and he's going to separate the, the, the wheat from the tares and uh, you know he's going to separate people who've trusted him and people who haven't trusted him. Uh, you know Jesus made everything. He made you, me. He made the sea. He made the world. It says, you know, fear God and give him glory. Let's look at uh, uh, let's look at Exodus twenty twelve. Exodus twenty twelve. It says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that the days may be long upon the land which the Lord 
thy God giveth thee. So, you know, we got to honor our mother and father. God gave us the right parents. You know, God's our father. Jesus Christ is our father. But our parents on this earth, God gives us a mother and father, and God gives you the right parents. You know, honor thy mother and thy father. You know, God gave you the right parents. You know, God didn't make any, God never makes any mistakes. So we're supposed to honor our mother and father in this life. You know, uh, let's look at, Let me look at first Tim second Kings second King Kings 194 second Kings 194 you know the real power is Jesus but he gives us instructions what to do if we resist it we go against it it's to our damnation we have to li li listen to what God told us to do through his holy Bible we have to listen you know here's the thing you honor your parents in the Lord if they're telling you to do wrong or not come to church or anything like that, then you know what, you, 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 you honor them, but hey, I'm going to church, I'm going to serve God, I'm going to, if it's right in the Bible, do what's right, your parents tell me, hey, buy me some drugs, buy me some alcohol, dad, you know, I don't know, mom, I'm not doing that for them, you know, I got, you know, I'm not, I can't do that for you. Second Kings 19.4 says, it may be the Lord, hold on, Second Kings 19.4, it may be the Lord thy God will hear all the words of Rabbi Shekha, whom the king of Assyria is master sent to reproach the living God and reprove the words which the Lord God hath heard. Wherefore, lift up thy prayer for the remnant that are left. You know, there's going to be a remnant, you know, the remnant left. There's people still serving God. There's people who still trust God, still want to give out tracts, still want to tell people about Jesus, but it's not many. You know, we have to lift it up in our prayer to God, and he gives us the strength. We get strength through the Lord Jesus Christ which gives us us our strength to go out there and tell others about him. Now let's look at verse 3 now of Romans 13. It says, For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. So rulers who rule well, who t study through God's word, who teach God's uh, commandments and do his will, it's not a terror to good people. It's, it's a terror to bad people because they, they want to go against God's word. It says, Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? You know, these people aren't afraid. They don't care, you know. Now, you know, there there are people in the world that you know. You tell them, hey, God's going to judge you. They don't care. You give them a gospel tract. They don't care. They don't believe there is no God. The Bible says the fool in his heart says there is no God. But you know, his his, his you know his judgment is coming. And to them who don't trust the or don't fear the power, damnation is coming. Hell and the lake of fire and outer darkness. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. It says, do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. You know what? Do God's will. Do God's will. He wants us to preach the gospel to every creature. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. So we got to tell everyone about Jesus Christ. Our friends, our family, our co-workers, tell our enemies. You know, tell people we, we don't like. You know, there's a lot of people we don't like, but we got to tell them about Jesus Christ. And it says, first, first, uh, you know, rulers who rule in the Lord, in the Lord, rulers who rule God's ways are a terror to the wicked. Rulers who rule wickedly are a terror to those who uh, who love God. You know, people are putting in. You know, you should have abortion. You should be able to. Uh, you know, just different, different wicked laws. You know, there's a lot of wicked laws now that you know we got to speak up. We got to speak up and say they're wicked. Let's look at First Corinthians two fourteen. First Corinthians two fourteen. You, know, you got to stand. You got to make a stand. Otherwise, you'll fall for everything. First Corinthians, you know, stand on Jesus. Stand on the rock. You're on the solid rock. He's never going to fail. You're never going to fall. First Corinthians two fourteen says, "But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned." So you know what? People who don't know God. They don't understand or confused or perplexed. Spiritually, they're discerned. They don't know spiritually. You know, we have to tell them about Jesus Christ. You know, uh, they're not of the world, but the Spirit of God we have and receive and follow. We Once you trust Jesus Christ, you read his word, you follow, you understand what's right, what you should do, and what you shouldn't do if you're living in the Spirit. But the people who are not spiritually discerned, they don't understand the God. You can't, you can't read the Bible if you don't trust them and understand what it means. Let's look at 1 John 4, 6. 1 John 4, 6.
1 John 4, 6. 1 John 4, 6 says, We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. But you know, God directs us. The Holy Spirit directs us in all truth. And we are of God and people who know God and we hear what he says. We read through his Bible and hear his word. But people who don't know God, they can't hear his word. And they're not spiritually inclined. They don't understand. Uh, let's look at uh, back in our text in verse 4. For he's the minister of God to thee for good. You know what? People who minister and tell, tell you about Jesus Christ, it's for good. It's not for evil. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. You know what? You know what? You tell people. You know what? You can you can give them advice from the Bible. If they listen to the advice from the Bible, you know what? It, most likely it, it'll go well. But if you go against the Bible's advice and good advice from godly people, you know, you don't go into that bar. Don't go drink today. Don't don't gamble. People are going to gamble today. They're going to lose all their money. Tomorrow they're not going to have any money. Tomorrow they're going to wake up and feel so sick. But thou which is evil, be afraid. For he that beareth not the sword in vain. You know what? We we got the sword. Our sword is this. The Bible. The whole God's holy word. And we give out the word of God to people. And that's our sword. For he's the minister of God, a revenger, to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. You know, people who doeth evil, you know, God uh, God's going to judge them. God's going to judge. I'm not going to judge anybody. God will judge. And then it says... Uh, Let's look at Proverbs 25, 28. Proverbs 25, 28. Jesus is going to judge every single person. Proverbs 25, 28. Proverbs 25, 28. You know, we have to show God's love. You know, Yesterday when that young man told me, I'll kill you in the flesh, I kind of took offense to it. But you know what? Thinking about it now, we have to pray for that young man that God will touch his heart. Amen. And turn them to him. Proverbs 25, 28 says, He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. So you got to have rule over your spirit, you know. you got to follow God. God, the Holy Spirit, guides you in all truth. You have to follow, live in the spirit, and don't live in the flesh and fulfill the lusts of the flesh because the flesh still wants to fight against the spirit. And people who don't know God, their flesh and spirit don't know God, so they're really headed on a bad track. They're just tossed and you know to and fro by the devil, which you know, ever any way he wants to throw them. You know what? But they have to hear the word of Jesus Christ that he died for their sin and that he can give them light and change all that wickedness. Let's look at Ephesians. Oh, I take that back. Let's look at Romans eight nine. Romans eight nine. Romans. No, the real power is God. Amen. There's no power like God. Romans 8 9 says, But ye are not in the flesh. You know, if you're saved by, by Jesus Christ, you're not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. So live in the Spirit. So if you be that Spirit of God dwell in you, now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. So through Jesus Christ, for him dying, the Spirit of him in us is our only righteousness in the flesh. There is no righteousness in the flesh. Let's look at Romans 8, 16 and to 25. It says, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So, you know what, if you trusted Jesus Christ, our spirit, you know what, when I, that guy's spirit yesterday, when he started talking to me, I'll kill you, you know what, my spirit didn't wear, bear witness with his spirit. And people who are like doing wicked stuff, the spirit of God doesn't bear witness with them. And it says, if we children are heirs of heirs of God and join heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, then we may be also glorified together. So if you're out there handing out tracts and, you know, people are mocking you, making fun of you, throwing tracts down, you know, telling you whatever, cur cursing at you, be, be, be happy. God, you know, God says be happy when people persecute you for his name. He says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that which shall be revealed in us. 
you know what, doesn't matter. Right now, you're going to go through this life. You could get people make fun of you, talk bad. No, the real power is Jesus. One day where he's coming back and we're going to be in heaven with, with him for eternity. It says, for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. So we're waiting for Jesus to come back. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willing, but by a reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption, corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. So the body is going to be changed. Our body, our corruptible body, is going to be changed to an uncorruptible body when Jesus Christ comes back. It says, For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth and pain together unto now, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves, grown within our spirit, waiting for the adoption of wit, the redemption of our body. You know what? Sometimes my spirit, my body, my body, it's like it's two separate people because my body hurts and you know what? I don't want to do what the spirit tells me. I'm tired. I don't want to go to church. But you know what? My spirit says, get up. You got to go to church. Open them doors. You, we have to serve God. We got to be faithful to God. It says, for we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, what doth he yet have hope for? You know, I've never seen God, but I know God God is God, and I believe that he's coming back, and he will come back to his holy word here, and he's going to take us for eternity. But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. You know what? I'm waiting for the return of Jesus Christ. You know what? He's coming, and he's coming soon. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. So you know what? When we have troubles and tribulations, our Spirit, the Spirit, Holy Spirit, helps us in our prayers to God, to Jesus, he helps us with our infirmities. You know, he's overcome. He said, if I can overcome, he said, we have to be overcomers. He I said, I have overcome the world. If he overcame the world, we can overcome the world in the spirit with our infirmities through Jesus Christ. He said, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So the Holy Spirit prays for us sometimes. They, he prays. He understands what we need. We may not know what we exactly know how to pray or pray to God, but he'll pray to God and give us, help us with what we need. Let's go back in our text in Romans 13, 5. It says, Wherefore, you must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. You know, your conscience beareth record. You know, people, if you're doing good, you know you're doing good. If you're doing wrong, your conscience. God instilled a conscience in every single person if you're doing good or you're doing evil. It lets you know God's instilled one in everyone. He's, he, he's made everyone. Amen? Let's look at Romans 9.1. Romans 9.1. It says, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost guides us in this life and we have to follow the Holy Ghost. We have to stay in our Bible, the King James Bible here, study your Bible daily, pray to God daily, you know, and, and this, stay stay focused on Jesus. You know, people are always telling me, oh, religion, religion, religion. I told them religion takes you to hell. Jesus Christ takes you to heaven because religion's man's way to God. Jesus Christ is God's way from, from man to God through Jesus Christ, through his son. Uh, 2 Corinthians 1 and 12. 2 Corinthians 1 12. Second Corinthians 1 12 says, For our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience, that is that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but the grace of God, we have had our conversation in the world, and more abundantly to you word. So you know what? It's towards towards you. You know, we, we have to have our conversation has to be about Christ to people, you know, not worldly things. You know what? We're in the world and our flesh sometimes they are in worldly things, but our conversation should be telling people about how, how to trust the Lord Jesus Christ and what he can do for them. And, you know, God, we, get, we should be God's assistants, his helpers to tell people about Jesus Christ, you know, the truth in Christ. You know, we've got to rejoice in our life for Christ. We don't want to lie. We got to show. We got to. Our lives should be an example. We shouldn't lie. We shouldn't steal. We shouldn't cheat others. We shouldn't live like the world. We don't follow the world. We have a, our testimony for Jesus. We should be different than the world. 
you know, your conscience is going to bear witness when you're doing wrong and you're not doing stuff that God wants you to do or the Holy Spirit's directing you and you're living in the flesh. Let's look at Titus 1.15. Titus 1.15. Titus Titus 1.15 It says, Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. So, you know what, people who trust Jesus Christ, and you live, you know what, you live simple, but you live honestly, and you live, you know, right, righteously like God, you, you like Jesus Christ, you, you live you try to live, you know, honest with all people, do things above board, don't cheat people. And But but the, he says the unbelieving, nothing's pure. So they don't care if they cheat you out of your last dollar. They don't care. Even their mind and conscience is defiled. So you know what? Their mind and conscience, it's defiled. And uh, then it says they profess that they know God. So some of these people through religion, they say, oh, I love know God. But in works, they deny him being abominable. So... You know, abominable is, uh, you know, wicked. It's wicked. It's against, horrible against God. And disobedient in every good work, reprobate. So, you know, every good work, it's, you know, condemned. It's unapproved. It's it's against God. You know, you can't go against God. Nothing pure in wickedness. If you're doing wicked, your mind, your conscience is going to, you're, you're defiled, you're filthy, you're ungodly, you're living wicked. Your conscience is seared. It's dull of feeling. You know, people, you know, playing video games now with so much killing and stuff. Man, they don't, I mean, they get, it gets their conscience. It sears their conscience. It's dull. They, it doesn't affect them. You know, phones, texting. I mean, all kinds of stuff pops up on your phone, man. People, dr drugs, alcohol, man, everything. Uh, advertisement, you know, sex stuff, all kinds of stuff. Uh, computers. You know, people are not used to speaking face-to-face. -face. You know, kids now... Their their uh, conscience is it, it, it's uh, it's like a lot of people's conscience seared. It's they don't uh, they don't want to have nothing to do with God. This technology, I think, it set us back a uh, hundred years instead of setting us forward. You know, yeah, you can find things quicker, but you can wicked stuff. You know, kids nowadays, by the time they're ten years old, see more wicked stuff on the phone than that I'd seen by the time I was thirty. You know, face to face, we have to talk eye to eye to people. We have to. Give them God's word. You know, God, God intended it that way. God intended people to be with people. You lose your humanity. You lose your, your, your godly. You lose what God gave us. He gave us to talk to people, our mouth, our eyes, you know, or your humanity, which, you know, you're not going to use it. You know, let's look at verse 6 now. It says, For this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually, continually upon this very thing. And then it says, render therefore to all your dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, customs to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. So you know what? You obey your laws, you obey, uh, like I said, some laws, you know, they're not, you know, if they don't agree with God, I'm not telling you to break the law, but all laws aren't, aren't, aren't you know, good laws or they're not right. You know, they're not go against God. Render therefore all dues, so, you know, pay your bills, pay your taxes, Pay everything, give tribute whose tributes do, you know, like, uh, you know, let's look at um, Matthew 22, 20 to 22. Matthew 20, 20 to 22. Remember, God is more powerful than all. He's all power. He's the real power. And if you have him in your life, don't worry how things go. They may seem like things aren't going good. You know, people are... The world's coming hard against you. The devil's coming hard. But you know what? We're going to win. We overcome with Jesus Christ. Matthew 22, 20 to 22. And it says, and he saith unto them. So they brought they brought some money to Jesus. And, uh, you know, he perceived it. Let's back up to verse 18. But Jesus perceived their wickedness. So they were trying to trick Jesus to say something wrong. Like to say something against the king. And said, why tempt ye me, you hypocrites? He said, they're two-faced because they're a bunch of liars and they were wicked. So he says, show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. 
So he said, you know, you know, bring me the coin. Let me look at it. And he saith unto them, whose image and superscription? So he said, whose image is on this coin? You know, whose image is on it? And they say unto him, Caesar's. Then he saith unto him, render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar, and unto God the things that are God's. When they had heard these words, they marveled and left them and went their way. He just gave them too much. He said, you know, render, we have to render things to what are in the world and, you know, pay your bills, pay your rent, pay your taxes, be honest, do things right, and then render things to God. But always God first. God first. God first. Things of God, you know, first. Always render things of God first. Let's look here. Hold on. <clears throat> You know, God puts who he wants in authority. You know, nobody's lying, cheating, or, or tricking God. You know what? All these people who are in authority are doing wicked. They're not tricking him. He knows what's going on. And he put them in there. And like God, I said, it's for a reason. It's to his glory. You know, God's ways aren't our ways. We get what we deserve, you know. You know, abortions, murders, wickedness. I wonder why. You know, we need to speak, speak up and be a witness for the Lord. We got to be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. We got to stand on Jesus. He's our solid rock. You know, amen. There's, you know, laws on the books. There's laws in the city and the state and the country, but that doesn't make them right. You know, if it agrees with God, it makes it right. We need, they're supposed to fear God and keep his commandments. Amen. And let's look at seven. So render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute, customs to whom cost, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Let's look at Ecclesiastes 12.13. Ecclesiastes 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 12 13 It says let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. And it says in verse 14, For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. But, you know, God's good. God knows all. We can't trick him. You know, nobody in government's doing wicked laws or doing backyard, backroom deals and tricking God. He, you know, we have to, we're supposed to keep his commandments, and his commandments go ye in all the world and preach the gospels. You know, we have to, you know, if God, if the, if the laws align with the Bible and with God's holy word, then it's right. If it doesn't, then it's not right. You know, not telling you to disobey the law, but see if it aligns with God's word. God's always right. I'm not, I'm far from always right, but if I read God's word and I'm telling you God's word, his word is always right. If God says it, that settles it. Amen. Let's look at Isaiah 520. Isaiah 520. <clears throat> it says, you know, God's, he's, he's, He's all powerful. He is the, you know, fear God, keep his commandments. In verse 520 of Isaiah, it says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. You know, right now they're calling wicked stuff in the world good, and we know it's not good because it's going against God, but that's how things are now. You know, they'll call, it said in the end times, they'll call good good evil and evil good so you know what that's where we're at right now but we got to be that witness for the lord jesus christ and tell others to to you know tell them to turn either turn or burn you got to turn or burn either you're gonna turn to the lord jesus christ turn to the light turn to the righteous the righteous one and accept him or you're going to stay in your sins and if you stay in your sins and you die and you die in your sins you're going to wake up in hell and then you're going to be into the lake of fire separated to god uh, for eternity Let's look at Romans 1, Romans 1, 18 to 32, Romans 1, Romans 1, 18 to 32, it says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. So God's wrath, when God comes back, when Jesus Christ comes back, 
it's going to be, it's not it's a, for all ungodliness and unrighteousness men who hold the truth and unrighteousness. You know, they hold the truth, but it's not in God's righteousness. It's in their righteousness, and in their righteousness, they're in sin. It says, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. So, you know, it's, it's uh, revealed in them, but, you know, it's plain, it's clear, it's obvious uh, in them, for God has showed it unto them. You know, God, God, you know, God's like, again, instilled that conscience. It tells you when you're doing right. You know when you're doing right and wrong. And people go, oh, you know, we shot him, but, you know, we didn't know any better. No, you knew better if you, and God's got that conscience, and God instilled the conscience in everybody. It says, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. You know what? You see the trees, you see the stars, the moon, the sun. I mean, uh, it's it's clearly seen. God, you know, God made everything. There was a creator, amen? And it says, being understood by the things that are made, even as eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You know, you got no excuse. If you don't turn to Jesus Christ and trust him as Lord and Savior, you've heard, you see his, his, his handiwork in the world. You have no excuse. Because because they... When they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. So you know what? <clears throat> they glorified him not as God, but they were in their vain in the imagination. So, you know what? Their vain imaginations, uh, you know, worthless, empty. Their imaginations are, you know, things that, uh, wickedness, you know, wickedness, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fool. You know, I got a, I got thirty thousand. Uh, I'm a professor of uh, theology, but there is no Jesus because I studied. You know, no, no. You know what? There is a God, and you study His Holy Bible, and it says, "Change the glory of the uncorruptible." God's uncorruptible. God is righteous. God is holy into an image made like a corruptible man. So some people, you know, you know what? Don't ever take me for what I do to what my Savior, who my Savior is, because I'll let you down. People watch me, and they say, oh, if your God's like you, and they see me doing something wrong, I'm, I'm corruptible. God's uncorruptible. And it says, in, in the birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. You know, people got gods. They worship the birds, the, tree, the trees. People worship uh, cows. They worship all kinds of animals. It says, wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness, through their lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. So here it says that men, women, you know, they're doing wickedness. You know, they gave up their you know, the, you know, lust of their own bodies, lust of their own hearts. Their, you know, lust turns into sin. You have to live in Jesus Christ and you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Says, Who changed the truth of God into a lie? You know what? You, tr you change the truth of God into a lie. You know what? You'll never get saved. You have to believe who God is and come to him believing that he died for your sins on the cross of Calvary and shed his blood for you, just for you, for specifically you. And it says, and who change the truth in the God of light and worship and serve the creature. So they're serving, you know, they're believing uh, the thing created. God, you know, how can you bow down to a wooden idol? God made the idol out of a tree. It says some you use for fire, some you... You know, you use to cook food with, and the other rest of it you bow down. And then it says, more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. You know what? Uh, Jesus Christ, we're going to be blessed forever, and we live through Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit now. And you know what? Let's just stop there at 25. Um, you know, we have to, God is the real power. You know what? You have troubles, you have trials. I have troubles. I got to come to God. Please help me. And I ask God, and you know what? He helps me. Not always on my time, but on his time. He's never let me down in 58 years. And you know what? He'll never let you down either. You just have to come come to him. He is the real power. You know, I boxed a long time. I thought I had power. But man, sometimes you get I got no power. The only power is God because he heals you and he brings you back up. Because, you know, a lot of us... Uh, you know, we've been sick, and uh, you know what? God raises us up. God lifts us up. God, through his power, he's the real power. We trust in him. And you know what? One day, we're going to have an uncorruptible body like his, and we're going to be in heaven with him. We're never going to have no pains or no sicknesses for eternity. And you know what? We need to tell others that's what we're going to do this weekend, Saturday, at the Argyle Fest, uh, the Chinese New Year. 
you're the dragon. That's not good. The dragon represents the devil in the Bible, but we're going to go against the dragon and hand out these tracts and tell people about Jesus Christ. We got different ones, Vietnamese, Chinese, English, and we're going to hand them out, and that's going to be at 12 o'clock Saturday, February 17th, or 1 o'clock, but we're going to meet up uh, either 7171, uh, West Gunnison or by the church here at 3239 West Bremar. But try to contact us if you want to come. Come Friday night to church here at 3239 West Bremar. We're going to be folding, putting everything together, the final touches on these tracks. And we need laborers. You know, we need people to go out there and hand out God's word. If you want to be part of that and tell, tell these people uh, about Jesus, help us fold the tracks, stamp the tracks, and put them together. And uh, we're going to hand them out on Saturday. Amen. So, you know, the real power. Keep keep yourself in prayer. Trust the Lord and uh, lift up his name to people wherever you're at. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the real power, for your power, Lord, for saving souls. And, Lord, just for helping us each day that we wake up and we're able to do, uh, just wake up and go to work. And, uh, Lord, you give us the strength to do all these things. And we know you're the true power and all power. And Lord, I pray that you'd use us next week and this week or wherever we're at to tell people about you and that we could hand these tracks out and that you would get the glory in this. And I pray again for uh, Miss Lurleen and her family down there in uh, Texas or Florida where they're at now and just uh, bless them and Miss Kim with her unspoken prayer and uh, Jimmy at Montclair, Lord. I pray you'd uh, bring them to church, Lord, and he'd hear your word and trust you as Lord and Savior. I pray for so many people. Uh, on the prayer, prayer prayer list from Friday night that you know who they are, Lord. We pray for these people and, Lord, for the people who are sick, that we pray that uh, you lift them up, lift up the fallen, Lord. You know, we tell people about you and that, we, that you would get all the glory in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let's sing page number... Three hundred and sixty. Leaning on the everlasting arms. 360. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning. Safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting arms. Well, praise God. We gotta lean on Jesus, amen. Amen. He's our hope. He's our he's our all in all. He he protects us. And uh, Steve Sajak in Texas, we love you. And uh may God bless you and uh Rogers Baptist Church, Pastor Gilbert and uh, family there, and uh, Pastor Thomas and Mrs. Thomas. Man, it's getting almost as warm as Texas and Chicago here. Wow, well, I think I got a little cooler today. It was cool, warmer in the week. It was like in the it was almost sixty degrees. That's almost. I think we broke a couple records this week in Chicago. And I know we got Curtis in Michigan and Danny Jonkel in Tennessee. 
You know what? Uh, praise God. Lift up the Lord Jesus Christ. You got to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ, and you know what? He'll bless you. Miss Mary Ann in Washington State, and you know what? There's so many people we know. The Hawkins family, Ken Jenkins, and uh, Mr. Terrell Robinson. You know, we want to see Mr. Terrell Robinson back in church, and Mr. Ken Jenkins. Amen. They're missing in action. You know, you can't run. You can't run. You know what? You got to, I don't know, maybe where they're at, they're serving God, but you know what? You got to come back to God. And again, you know, Allison's in competition tonight down, I think it's in Florida, in Florida, that she uh, may get, God would get the glory in it. Amen. We praise God and uh, give him the glory. Let's pray. Dear Lord, again, I thank you, uh, Lord, for uh, just for being here with us, Lord, and just blessing us and giving us every things we need that you give us, Lord. And uh, we praise you and give you honor and glory. And Lord, I pray that you be with us now. Go with us, protect us, keep us safe in the world, Lord, till you come. I praise you and glor glorify you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in a mountain of his holiness, beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth. Is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king? Well, praise God, everybody. Have a good night and be blessed. Amen. Amen.